Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Welcome back. Uh, before the break, uh, we were working on liquid surge tank where we were considering uh, that there is a valve at the outlet and we were considering a case when the flow through that valve is uh, proportional to the square root of the height. And uh, the equation which we got for this particular system is ADH over DT is equal to Fn minus alpha root H. And we said that uh, the last uh, term in this equation, the root h is a nonlinear term and we cannot proceed further with Laplace transform for this system because it is nonlinear. So the first thing we have to do is linearize this system. So let us look at how we can linearize a nonlinear function. And the mathematical a uh, rule which we are going to use to do this is Taylor series expansion. So you might be aware of uh, the Taylor series expansion. Uh, let me revisit it again. If we have a function of variables x1, x2 to xn, I can approximate this function around the function value at any point, let us say f of x1 0, x2 0, xn 0. So this is some point where we evaluate the function or around which we are linearizing the function. And then uh, this can be written as the multiple successive derivatives of the function. So we will be writing del f over del x1 evaluated at the new point times x1 minus x10 that is the departure of any point away from the point around which we are linearizing the system plus del f over del x2 again evaluated at the same point x2 minus x2 0 and all these first order derivatives will be calculated for all the independent variables. So we will have xn evaluated at this point xn minus xn0. So these are all the first order derivatives and you can see that they are all linear in terms of the variables uh, of interest. And then the Taylor series expansion actually goes for the higher order terms, but for this approximation, we will make an approximation that whatever are the higher order terms, they are negligible and we will approximate the entire thing only up to this point and say that this is approximately equal. So if you consider only up to this term, then we will have to replace this by an approximate sign. So what we will be doing is we will be approximating any nonlinear function as a function value at some point which in our case would typically be a steady state and we will see what is the advantage of doing that plus first order derivatives evaluated at the steady state times the deviations from the steady state. So automatically we have gotten all the deviation variables when we linearize a system. So let us now try to do this Taylor series expansion based linearization for our example. 
So our nonlinear function was alpha root h so we want to approximate it so we'll approximate it by a function value at steady state so we'll have alpha root steady state it is a single variable function so we'll have only one derivative and not even a partial derivative it will be a pure derivative of root h so it is 1 over 2 root h which is evaluated at the steady state. So, we will have 2 root h s s multiplied by h minus h s s. So, what we have is this and now let us substitute this in the original dynamic equation which is a d h over d t is equal to f in minus alpha root hss plus 1 over 2 root hss h minus hss and now we will write the equation for deviation as well. So, A D H S or steady state equation will be F in S S minus alpha H S S raised to half. So, now we will again subtract 2 from 1. What we get is A D H tilde over dt is equal to fin tilde then this term will get cancelled and what we get is minus alpha over 2 root h s s times h minus h s s which is h tilde. So, we can again simplify this equation or rearrange this equation and what we will get is 2a root hss over alpha dh tilde over dt plus h tilde is equal to 2 root hss over alpha f in tilde. So, we will again compare this with the original equation and that it gives us tau dy by dt plus y is equal to kp times f of t. So, for this system where we approximated a nonlinear system by a linear equivalent, what we have obtained is our tau is 2a root hss over alpha and the gain kp is 2 root hss over alpha. So, here I would like you to point to something that uh, our time constant and kp which are the system constants what you realize that they are functions of the original steady state. So, what uh, is interesting is if I linearize the system at different steady state then the tau and kp which I am going to get are going to be different. So, for this example let us say if I linearize the system at 50 percent level it will give me a value of time constant and kp but if I linearize it around let us say 75 percent or 25 percent then these cases would give rise to different time constants. So, even though I am saying it is a constant uh, it actually depends on the original steady state and the dynamics would heavily depend on the steady state around which that dynamics is linearized. So, that will always be the case whenever we linearize a nonlinear system uh, the parameters which we obtain for the system are going to be dependent on the steady state. 
So as long as that steady, the deviation from that steady state is uh, not significant, the approximation of linearization would work and we will see that uh, through simulation sometime later in this lecture. So again we have seen that uh, this tank uh, where the outlet flow is a nonlinear function of height, we can approximate it as a linearized version and uh, we can show that it is indeed a non first order system and uh, the first the resemblance to first order system will always be there uh, the deviation from the first order dynamics will always be seen if uh, the system is excited uh, beyond a certain range. So the changes in the height are more uh, in that case the deviation from the approximation of linearized version will also be more. So let us now take a, a fourth example of stirred tank heater. where fluid comes in at flow rate F in and the inlet temperature of T i, it gets heated by some source, the amount inside the tank is V, temperature inside the tank is T and the outlet what we get is the same flow rate but the updated temperature of T. So for this system, uh, in the last lecture we had derived the dynamic equation for the system which uh, looked like. V rho Cp dt over dt is equal to Fn rho Cp Ti minus T plus Q. So that is the dynamic equation. Let us call it equation 1 and we can write similar equation at steady state. What we get is V rho Cp dTSS over dT is equal to, we will assume for now that Fn uh, is not changing as a function of time and the only disturbance uh, here is uh, Ti. So rho Cp TISS minus TSS plus the steady state value of the heat input. And in order to write this uh, dynamic equation in deviation form, we will take uh, the difference between equation 1 and 2. So we get V rho Cp deviation in temperature is equal to F in rho Cp deviation in inlet minus deviation in outlet temperature plus deviation in Q. So now we will take Laplace transform. So we will have V rho Cp STS minus deviation at time t equal to 0 which is 0 because we are assuming steady state is equal to F in rho Cp TIS minus TS plus Qs. So let us uh, try to simplify uh, this equation. So we will have V rho Cps Ts plus F in rho Cp Ts is equal to F in rho Cp Tis plus Qs. So from that we can come with an expression for Ts
So we'll try to write it in a standard form of Kp over tau s plus 1. So we can see that uh, the outlet temperature transfer function, uh, the outlet, uh, the Laplace domain variation of T bar uh, is composed of the effects of the changes in inlet temperature and changes in the heater duty and both of them follow the same form of, so this is Kp1, Kp over tau s plus 1 and even the second transfer function has again Kp over tau s plus 1. So this system is composed of the parallel effect of two first order dynamics and we'll have Kp1 is equal to 1, so the gain is constant and unity, tau1 is equal to tau2 is equal to V over f in and you can recollect that this v over f in is similar to residence time of the system. So, which v over f we typically represent as a residence time in the CSTR. So, that is exactly the same time is appearing as the time constant of the system and the Kp2 is 1 over f in rho Cp. So, the system has two capacities, both are of first order nature. And lastly, let me take uh, an example which combines uh, both these effects of thermal effect and the material effects. So the fifth example we are going to take is stirred heater with variable volume. So we'll make, uh, we'll remove one of the assumptions of the previous system that the volume of the tank remains constant because uh, there is always a possibility that the inlet and outlet flow rate uh, are not kept at the same value. So we may have inlet F in, inlet temperature Ti, the volume at any time inside the vessel is V, temperature is T and what goes out, uh, let us call it as F out at T where F in may not be equal to F out all the time and we have the same heat duty Q. So in that case uh, the original equation still remains the same. So now here uh, instead of uh, just the energy balance we also have to write the material balance. So we will start with material conservation equation. So which tells me uh, the total material coming in is rho times F in, uh, material going out is rho times F out, there is no generation or consumption of material which is then eventually equal to rate of change of material content which is rho times V uh, and we have all assumed that uh, density is, a, is independent of temperature or time and uh, in that case what we get is dv over dt is equal to f in minus f out. So let us call it equation 1 and that is the equation which we get uh, which captures the dynamics of material balance. So let us now try to write energy balance uh, for this system which will get slightly modified because v is no longer constant. So we have rate of energy in which is f in rho Cp Ti minus T ref along with Q and then the output is F out rho Cp T minus T reference. 
there is again no generation or consumption of energy in this system. So, this has to be equal to the rate of change of enthalpy content of the tank which is dgt of v rho cp t minus t reference. So, we can see that here there is a multiplication of variable volume as well as temperature. So, we have to use the product rule for derivative. So, the right hand side will be equal to rho C p t minus t reference times d v over d t plus v rho C p times d t over d t. And from 1, let us substitute the value of d v over d t. So, you get rho C p t minus t reference f in minus f out plus v rho C p d t over d t. So, that is the final step which we get uh, after substitution and now we will have to simplify this equation to write it in terms of dv uh, dt over dt. So, we can see that uh, some terms are appearing on both the sides. Uh, for example, this f in rho c p times t ref is same as f in rho c p times t ref. So, these two terms will get cancelled. Similarly, f out rho c p t ref will be same as f out rho c p times t ref. So, this will term will also get cancelled. And lastly, f out rho c p t will also be appearing here as f out rho c p t. So, all these three terms will get cancelled and what uh, we would be left with in this case is f in rho c p t i minus t plus q is equal to v rho c p d t over d t. So, that is the equation uh, we would get um, and then we will have to kind of again rearrange it because volume is also an variable. So, we cannot have it multiply by the time de temperature derivative. So, we will write it as d t over d t is equal to f in t i minus t over v plus q over v rho c p. So, this is the final form of the dynamic equation for temperature uh, and uh, note that this is again a non-linear equation because uh, our volume is a variable which is appearing in the denominator. Uh, there is also f in is a variable which is multiplying another variable like t i or t. Similarly, q is a variable and volume is a variable, there is a division of the variables. So, both these terms are non-linear. So, our step is we have to first linearize it around the steady state. So, let us take each of these terms separately and try to linearize it. So, we will get we have f in t i minus t over v. There are three variables here. So, this is x 1, there are four variables here x 1, x 2, x 3 and x 4. So, we will approximate it by the steady state value which will be f in s s t i s s minus t s s over v s s followed by the four first order partial derivatives. First we will write in terms of f in. So, we will get t i s s minus t s s over v s s. So, this is the derivative with respect to f n and multiplied by 
f in minus f in ss then the second term will take for ti so it will be f in ss over vss times ti minus ti ss the third term will be with respect to t so it will be minus f in ss over vss times t minus t s s and the last term will be with respect to the volume which will be f in s s t i s s minus t s s over v s s square times v minus v s s. So, these are all the, so this will be the approximation of the first term where you can see uh, there are a bunch of steady state values which will be multiplied by the deviation forms of the variables around steady state and then we will take the second term which is q over v rho c p here there are two variables so this is x1 this is x2 so what we get is q s s over v s s rho c p plus the derivative with respect to q will have v s s rho c p q minus q s s plus the derivative with respect to v it will be q s s over v s s square rho c p times v minus v s s. So, this is the approximation for the second term. So, let us now include both these approximation linearized terms into the original equation and uh, what we will get is the final linearized form which will be dt over dt will be equal to <coughs> f in s s t i s s minus t s s over v s s plus I will also add the constant term from the second equation here q s s over v s s rho c p and then we will keep on adding the deviation terms uh, for each variable. So, we will have t i s s minus t s s over v s s this multiplies the deviation in f n. Then we have f in s s over v s s times t i tilde then we have f in s s over v s s times t tilde and then instead of we will first write the q term which will be 1 over v s s rho c p q tilde and lastly let me write everything for the volume uh, which comes out to be f in s s over v s s times t i s s minus t s s plus q s s over v s s rho c p all is multiplied by 1 over v s s times v tilde. So, this is the final equation which we uh, get and uh, you can notice uh, that uh, there are some terms which are coming directly from the steady state. So, if I write uh, the original equation at steady state this is what uh, we get as dt s s over dt which will equal to 0 and similarly this extra term which we have written that is also same as dt s s over dt which is equal to 0. So, this simplifies our analysis and the final form which we get is dt over dt is equal to ti s s minus t s s over v s s 
times f in tilde plus f in ss over v ss times t i tilde minus f in ss over v ss t tilde plus 1 over v s rho c p q tilde. So, this is the final derivative, this is the final dynamic equation in the deviation form on which we can take a Laplace transform which will give us STSS and minus T0 which is going to be 0 is equal to TISS minus TSS over VSS F in S plus F in SS over VSS TIS minus F in SS over VSS TS plus 1 over V rho, rho CP VSS QS. So, now all we need to do is move this term on the left hand side. So, we have S plus F in SS over V SS, all this is multiplying by T S is equal to T I S S minus T S S over V S S times F in S plus F in S S over V S S T I S plus 1 over V S S rho C P times Q S and then we will rearrange this to get the final form of Laplace transform for the output which will be T I S S minus T S S over V S S divided by S plus F in S S over V S S this multiplies f in s plus f in s s over v s s over s plus f in s s over v s s times t i s plus 1 over V rho C P over S plus F in S S over V S S times Q S. And then lastly, uh, we want to compare it with uh, the transfer function which is of the form K P over tau S plus 1. So, we have to make this term as 1. So, we will multiply everywhere by V S S over F in S S and what we end up getting as the final form is T i s s minus T s s over F in s s over V s s over F in s s s plus 1 this multiplies this plus 1 over V S S over F in S S S plus 1 T I S plus 1 over F in S S rho C P over V S S over F in S S s plus 1 q tilde s. So, this is the final form of the transfer function, the relationship of output temperature and we can see that it is a summation of 3 effects. So, we have this 
first kp1 over tau1 s plus 1 this is the second term which is kp2 over tau2 s plus 1 and then the last term the last effect is kp3 over tau3 s plus 1. So, it is a summation of three first order capacities and they are corresponding to the three input variables f in inlet temperature T i and the heat duty Q. So, we have seen these five examples uh, where we could show that uh, the relationship between output and different inputs follows first order dynamics. So, out of these examples let us try to delve further and see what is so special about these five systems. So, all these five examples uh, if you see the first three examples uh, those systems have a capacity to store ma mass or material whereas the last two systems uh, have a capacity to store energy and especially the last one has the capacity to store mass as well as energy. So, all of these systems have uh, a way to store material or energy. So, that is a very defining characteristic of first order system that they have a capacity to store material. Now, if you look further uh, except the first example all the other examples there is also a mechanism or a resistance for this capacity building. So, if we look at the surge tank with linear or non-linear outlet flow rate as the flow is proportional to the height inside the tank. So, if you say F out was either equal to H over R or F out was alpha S raised to half. So, what does this do is as H tends to increase which means the material inside the tank is increasing the outlet flow rate also increases. So, this causes H to decrease. So, an increase in H is eventually triggering an action which is causing a reduction in H. So, this kind of resistance to capacity building So, this is a resistance to capacity building and this will allow the system to do what is known as self regulation or self stabilization. So, this feature will allow that this kind of mechanism will sort of keep a check on how the height changes inside this tank and it will not uh, under most of the cases allow an infinitely large change in height. So, as the height increases the F out also takes care of reducing the height. Same phenomena you can see is also present in the last two examples where there is a storage of energy. So, what happens in those cases the outlet flow of energy is F rho C p t minus t ref. So, this is the mechanism by which energy can exit this system. Now, if you can see that as the temperature inside the tank increases this Q out is also going to increase and as this Q out increases there is more exit of energy than the inlet and eventually it will cause temperature to go down. So, you can see similarity between the second and third example and the fourth and fifth examples that there whenever the, there is increase in the state variable there is a me mechanism which eventually leads to a decrease in the total inventory. So, the total inventory of energy in this example would again have a resistance. So, there is a resistance to capacity or inventory building. So, all these examples 2 to 5 they have two features. So, we have seen that for a first order system they are characterized by capacity to store which may be material 
energy mostly for chemi systems these will be the two types of storages and sometimes they are also accompanied by resistance to capacity building so these are the two important features or characteristics of first order systems now for the second part uh, the second point i excluded the first example so when we have that purely capacitive process which is also known as an integrator the outlet flow rate we had considered was an independent of the height so there was no such resistance to capacity building so there was only a capacity to store and there was no resistance and that is why these systems are also known as purely capacitive systems or integrators thank you